Hey guys, this is me, 80s from Reward. Today, guys, we're back for UA for Conference League predictions, guys, for the round of 16, guys. Should be very interesting, guys. Should be very interesting indeed. So we have a very first meeting here of Hardest NBA Gray versus Feynman. For me, this is going to be a very interesting one. Very tough to call because both these teams are um, very much balanced, in my opinion. I don't think there's, like, a clear favorite in this one. And it's interesting that Partizan made it to the stage, you know. And I think the fact that they're in a great position to win the league, obviously, you guys can see right here. They're in a great position indeed. It's going to be interesting to see how they do it. And unfortunately, you guys, for foot mob, they don't even have the squad out there, which is really unfortunate. You guys can see in a great, great position here, uh, two points clear of Serena Zvezda. So for me, the thing about this is so difficult to call is that how much focus will they put on this competition? Like, will they focus more on the Conference League or the League? In my personal opinion, I think they should go, should, they should go for the League because I think for me, they're in a great position to win the League. This is the first time ever in their history. This is going to be a first time they've done it in a long time from now. And I just think that for me, it's a great t a chance to win the Super League, yeah, man. It's a great chance indeed. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they do. As for Feyenoord, they have some great players. Obviously, players that comes to mind, obviously, you also uh, obviously have Ariza Jahabakash, uh, Luis Sincestre, Reese Nelson, Mary Benite, and, yeah. So, you know, you guys can see stats-wise this season. They've been pretty good this season. You know, in the Eredivisie, Ghost Teal has actually been the top goal scorer. 13 goals. Okan Kozaki with 8. And you guys can see how good of a team they have, you know. That, guys, is a very tough one to call. It's a very tough one to call because I don't really think either of these teams are that, um, like, they're very close apart. I still give the edge to Feyenoord just because, like I said, I think the second leg at home will be a huge advantage for them. As well as the fact that I believe they're in a very... I feel like they'll put more focus on the this competition than they would on the league. Just because of how cl close things are. But they're in a great position for the league. I mean, they could theoretically still win this league ahead of IX and PSV, man. So, you know, it'll be interesting. But I do believe they'll go... They'll focus more on that um, than this. The um the the uh, Eredivisie. Just because, like I said before, guys. I just think that for me, partisan. It's the first time they can do it in a long time. And I think they should focus more on the league. Whereas... Feyenoord, I think they should focus more on the um, Europa, uh, Europa Conference League. So I am going to go with Feyenoord to prevail, though, on this one. And, yeah, let me go ahead and do a quick Google search to see which players we have to keep in mind. Um, And, yeah, maybe you can tell you guys on here. So players, um, you guys can see right here some of the best players. They got Ricardo Gore, uh, Permite, Lazar Markovic, Guisa Meneng. And so, yeah, those kind of players I would recommend to keep an eye upon. So, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Feyenoord to prevail on that one, though. But that one's a very tough one to call. That can go either way. Okay? And there will be timestamps in the description below, as per usual. So, let's move on to the next one we have. Our next match here it is Pauk versus Ghent. Now, this is a very interesting one, guys, because obviously Pauk, Ghent, um, obviously made it here uh, because they topped the group. And Ghent, let's go look at the players that they have. So, actually, let's go look at the head-to-head -head records. So, head-to-head, -head, guys, Ghent has actually got the better head-to-head -head with one win in a club friendly, though. So, you know, as you guys can see, Ghent has been on superb form. And I just never mean Ghent's been really good. As for Pauk, they just came through against penalties against Michelin. And it's going to be interesting to see how they do in this one. You guys can see in their own league, they're not been doing, they're doing okay in their own league. You know, um, they're fifth right now um, behind Anderlecht and behind Royal Antwerp, behind Club Rouge, and behind Union ST Galus. So, you guys can see the squad. They have some good players. Actually, let's go to stats. Stats-wise, the top goal scorer has actually been Tyreek Tissado, Norio, who's got the most assists this season. And yeah, man, so keep an eye upon those two players. You guys can see Conference League-wise. If you did Conference League right here, you do a little search there. Seven, Combs has actually got the most goals for them. Jodrik Kicevegni. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how they do in this one. Obviously, guys, like I said, I think they have a decent team on here. Um, You obviously have Malade, uh, Lemonjic, and yeah, so... As for Pauk, they have a decent team. Like I said, I think what they did against Michelin was very commendable. Like I said, they're they're second in the league, but they're comfortably behind. I mean, they're like 15 points behind. So this is going to be very much, they should probably focus more on this competition. And um, it's going to be interesting to see how they do in this one, guys. You guys can see the fixtures. Let's go to the last game they, they played. Last game they played was actually um, the game against Athens where they actually drew 1-1. And you guys can see a lineup here, Pauk. They had Jabba, Akun, Agusto, Sarah Kuch. You know, and it's a very interesting team. But I am going to go ahead and say Ghent should win. I think Ghent have the far superior team than Pauk. And I think, Ghent, for me, I've just been more impressed with Ghent. I think Ghent, for me, been done a good job so far. 
in their own Belgian league. And I just think that for me, if they can do so well in the Belgian league, they can translate over that to Europe. So I'm going to say Ghent to prevail in that one, though. Okay, so let's move on over to the next match. Our next match we have, it is five minutes in, so we just put the timestamps below. Our next match is Slavia Prov versus Lask. And now this is a very interesting one, very difficult one to call because Slavia, man, they actually beat Ferenbacher home and away, which was very, very impressive. And even though they didn't have Mesut Ozil, that's still very impressive. You guys can see how close the league is and their own um, one Liga right there. You guys can see they're actually joined first with Vittoria Pizan, but they have a better goal difference. You guys can see squad-wise, they have some great players. Obviously, you know, Oilanka is one player to look out for. Kremerich as well, Tetchi as well, Mesoput. It's a very good team from Czech. You know, I think a Czech Republic team is very decent, guys. They can cause some issues. And I think for me, this is a team that you cannot write up upon. And Thomas Hull is a very good player. Really rate the guy. And Samek as well as decent. And, you know, and I just think for me, guys, it's a very decent team. You cannot write up upon this team. Now as for Lask, guys. Lask has been very, very interesting. And I just think that for me, they have some great players. Obviously, they're right now, guys, they're actually eighth in the league, which is very, very poor. I would say so. And they're way behind for Salzburg for the league, um, which is to be expected. And, you know, obviously, they got Schalgar, who's a decent goalkeeper. You know, obviously, you also have Nakumura, Rogois, Gruber, Flecker, you know, Grigor. It's a very good Austrian-based team, you know. And so, for me, guys, it's a very tough one to call. But I'm going to go with Slavia Prague to prevail on this one, just because, like I said, guys, I was really impressed with what they did against Ferenbache. And last for me is a team that is decent, guys. They're just decent for me. They're on and off. Sometimes they do well. Sometimes they don't. It's a very difficult team to call. I mean, it's a difficult one to call, but I'm still going to give Slavia the edge here to prevail. But, man, it's a very, it's hard to call, man. It's hard to call because I think both these teams are around the same strength. So, yeah, man, let's go ahead and move on to the next game. The next game we have is a very interesting one. We have Vitesse versus Roma. Now, this, for me, is a very difficult one. And while people will say on paper that Roma should win, and I do agree that they should win, something tells me that this won't be as straightforward because we know what um, Vitesse did to Tottenham. They actually gave Tottenham a very good game there. And Roma this season, they've been very inconsistent. You guys can see in the area division, they're actually six right now, which is very interesting. And um, they're 40 points. So you guys can see a squad that they have some great players. Obviously, the players they'll go for are uh, Gribbage, good player indeed, Badan, Opanda, Butek, Gong, and Derit. You know, and I just think for me, guys, this um, Vitesse team, I was very impressed with what they did against um, uh, um, Rapid Wien, you know, coming from behind two goals to nil at home to get the job done, you know. Um, unfortunately for them, though, the first leg will be at home, which I think is a very big, massive blow for them. And had maybe the first leg been away, then maybe they could fancy their chances uh, first uh, first leg away. You know, you guys can see Roma and Syria, they're actually not doing very well. They're actually six right now, which is okay for them. 44 points, you guys can see how behind they are for top four, six points behind. You guys can see they've been very inconsistent this season. You know, some players still got for obviously, you have the talented Tammy Abraham has been a really good goal scoring for him. Zanilo as well, Carlos Perez. Then you have um, Mkhitaryan, you know, El Shawari, um, Maitland Niles, you know, Duara, Darbo, you know, Cristante, Olivero, you know. Um, then obviously for the center backs, have Chris Smalling, who's one to look up player, although he's out, which could be a big blow for them. Roger Ibenez, you know. And my issue with Roma is that defensively, they're all over the place. Defensively, for me, I don't think they have a very good partnership at the back. And I think for me, that's what Vitesse can really count them upon. Because I'll be honest with you guys. If Jose Mourinho does not make Roma to at least the semifinals, that's a huge embarrassment because he needs to win it. He need, if Roma wins this conference league, it'll be a great, great achievement for um, Roma, obviously, and for um, Mourinho in particular. And I just think that for me, man, it's important that they get the job done because, like I said, guys, let's be real. Roma should win this. But something tells me that there is a potential upset, and I wouldn't be surprised, guys. We know how we know how poor this Roma team have been. You know, in the conference league, they just got smashed by Bodo. Guild. And if they're not able to beat Bodo, how are they supposed to win this, you know? Uh, so, yeah, like I said, guys, I'm going to still pick Roma to prevail. But, man, I'm not very sure with this one, guys. I'm not very sure because I'll be honest with you guys. I think Vitesse could do this. But I'm still, I'm not going to be that bold enough to go with that. But I'm still going to pick Roma. But, man, that's a very tough one. Very tough one to call. And that could go either way. So, yeah. They got Mancini as well, and, you know, it's going to be interesting, guys. It's going to be interesting indeed. So, we have Roma's defense for me has been very, very, um, very um, iffy, in my opinion. Then we move on to Bodo Glimt versus AZ Alkmaer, guys. Can Bodo continue their fairy tale, fairy tale run, guys? Can they march on into the quarterfinals of the UEFA 
Conference League, which I think would be a great achievement for him, Voto, man. You guys can see right there in their own Illustrian, like, they haven't even started that. And I gotta commend them, man. I mean, the fact they're able to beat Celtic, home and away, having played no competitive games this year is absolutely fantastic indeed. And, you know, that just says a lot, you know. And I just look at players like Paul Grino, Boniface, Esperid, Hogg. You know, so again, nor does, you know, it's a very good Nor Norwegian based team. And I just think they have some ballers in this team, man. Absolute ballers. Hoyge as well. And it's a, it's a great team, man. It's a great team indeed. As for AZ Alkmaar, of course, they have some decent players. I'm not saying they, they don't. It's just for me, I just don't know. Um, You guys can see they're actually fourth right now, just behind Fire Nor uh, for the um conference league spot. And you guys can see how close the league is, how competitive it is. And you look at the squad that they have here, guys. Um. You know, and I just think that for me, it's important that we see players like Poco, Stepa Carlson step up, Zachary Abkoba, you know, Beresi, Tabunu, you know, and I, I just think that for me, guys, I think Bodo's going to do it, guys. I think Bodo's going to do it. And while AZ Alkmaar could probably say they're the strong favorites, I've been very impressed with what Bodo have been doing. And I think what they did in the group stage was fantastic. They should have actually topped the group, in my opinion. Um, but they're now in this position. And I think for them, if they can get to the quarterfinals, that'd be great, great achievement indeed. So I'm going to continue with the fairy tale story, guys. And I think Bodo will actually prevail in that one, guys. So we're going to move on over to the next one, guys. Our next match we have here is match number six. We have Leicester City versus Rens, guys. Leicester City versus Rens. It's a very interesting one. Probably the match of the round, guys, of how close things are for Leicester City this season, guys. They've been very, very poor. I have not been impressed with Leicester City this season. They've been very underwhelming, guys. You guys can see the position of the league table. They've been, they're actually 12th right now, 30 points. And you can see how Brendan Rodgers has not really got the best out of this team. You know, you look at the players that they have here. It's a very good team. You have Kasper Schmeichel. You have Suyanchu. You have um, Wesley Fofana, Luke Thomas, Ayunza Perez, you know, Tielemans, Ndidi, Hamza Chaudhry, Castigne, Madison, Nepalus Mendy. Then you have Jamie Vardy, Ian Nacho, Daka, Barnes, Luke, man. It's a very good team, guys. It's a great team. But my issue with uh, Leicester this season, they've just been very, very poor. Whereas Rens, on their hand, they've been decent. They've been actually been decent. They're actually fourth in the league. They've actually been very good indeed. And you can see how good they have been. They've actually been very solid this season, guys. And, you know, and they're in a great position to get European football next season. You guys can see the squad that they have here. You know, And um, they have a very good team, man. You know, you look at players like Laborde. He's a great player. Martin Terrier, Lucas Tichano, you know, and Jeremy Doku. And it's very impressive they're still doing this well without their star player, Kamavinga, you know, which shows a lot about this team. So, for me, guys, it's a very difficult one to call for Bruno Guinnesso. I just think that for me, I'm going to go with Rens just because I feel like for me, Rens have been more solid and I've been more impressed with them, whereas Leicester City, they've just been on free fall this season. They've sometimes been good, sometimes been iffy. And they've just been all over the place. And so I do think Rens will actually win this one, guys. But, man, this is a tough one to call. And this one could go either way. But I am going to pick Rens just because, like I said, I feel like they've been more of a team this season. Whereas Leicester City this season, I've been very disappointed. I've not been happy with them. And I think an early exit from this conference will be really bad for them. And if they do exit this early, guys, they're not going to get any European football next season. Which will be a big, big catastrophe for Brandon Rodgers, his team. Then we have Marseille versus Basel, guys. I think Marseille have been given a, one of the kindest draws ever. Um, Basel, obviously, they have some decent players. Obviously, they used to have Arthur Carval, but we know what happened. He moved to Fiorentina, and you guys can see how they've been doing their Super League. They have not been doing particularly that amazing. They've been okay, but 41 points, third place in the group. And you guys can see in the league, um, they, like I said, guys, they have a decent team. You know, Adam Shalazi, Lim Miller, Chipate, Nodono, Vishe, Chalov, you know. It's a decent team, like I said, guys, but not really anything too fantastic. And I think that the fact that they let Cabral go, I think, is a big, big blow indeed. And I think that would have definitely could have made a huge difference. As for Marseille, guys, I think Jorge San Pauli has done a great job with this team. You guys can see how they do in the French league. They're actually second in the league, just about. And you can see how many players they've been really looking great this summer. You know, the signs they made, Bellardi, Luis Perez, Paris, Liba, and... Uh, Kamara, Gay, Papa Gay, uh, Conor Lofundament, Tuyo Gunduzi, Gerson, um, you know, and you look at the attack, Payet, Bakambu, Milik, you know, Bamba Dieng, you know, it's a Che under. it's a very good team, guys. I think Horace Sampoli has done a good job with this team, you know, to get the core group of players, and Mandana, they had one of the best summer transfers ever, and I think they could go on a deep run this season, and the conference league, so, and they're also one of my potential favorites to win it, guys, so I'm going to say, um, Marseille to beat Basel, and I think they should make it to the next round. So I'm going to say Marseille to 
prevail through to the next round. And then finally, we have the final matchup here, guys, is PSV versus Copenhagen, guys. That's a very interesting one. You guys can see PSV. They have a decent team on paper. And I just think that for me, it'll be very interesting to see how PSB do. They're in a very competitive title race. You guys can see in the ear division, you guys know the players. They obviously got Aaron Zahavi, one of the best players they have. And then obviously, Kudu, Gokakupu, Nonan Baduko, Vinicius, uh, Carlos Vinicius. They have Fede Fofana, Burma. You know, it's a very good team. Richard Ledesma, you know, Mario Gatsa as well. Very good player indeed. Ibrahim Sanagre, Sangare. You know, it's a very interesting team, guys. And I think for. Uh, Copenhagen, they'll be very, very defensive. I think Copenhagen will be very defensive in this kind of game. And they're actually top of their own league, but just about by three points. And they do have some quality players, obviously, the ones that I'm looking for. And Nicol Nicolo Jorgensen, Kamariko, Mukoria, Bavain. So, you know, I'm going to go with PSV to prevail. I think they should prevail in this one, guys. But this is a very tough one to call. This could go either way. And I can see this being like a very close game, very slow scoring one. And I think that's going to be about it. So let me go ahead and reiterate my conference league predictions um, to, re to, to recap. So um, my my predictions are I have um, Gate making it through. I have Feyenoor making it through. Slavia making it through. Roma making it through. Bodo making it through. Rennes making it through. Marseille making it through. And PSV Eindhoven. So I want you guys to comment down below. What do you guys think of these predictions, guys? And of course, guys, if you did enjoy this video, I would highly appreciate you hit the like button, subscribe if you're new around here, comment down below your thoughts, and make sure you guys check out me in my other blogs. So the description below, my Twitter, Discord, email, and Twitch. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Make sure you guys share the video with your friends and compete in the tournaments below, guys. You know, on tournaments on YouTube and Twitter. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.